During the mid-1990s, the horsepower race was in full swing between General Electric and General Motors' Electromotive Division. Starting in 1995, EMD revived the 20-cylinder engine design and introduced the 5,000 horsepower SD80 Mac. GE soon responded with the 6,000 horsepower 7HDL Prime Mover in their AC6000 CW locomotive. EMD answered back with the GM 16 V26 5H four-stroke diesel engine with a similar 6,000 horsepower output. Thus, the SD90 Mac H was born. Other than the canted radiator intakes denoting Phase 2 units, most external changes were relatively minor. Some of the changes that appeared on the Phase 2 units in 2003 had been introduced gradually in concurrent SD70M production over the previous 2-3 to three years. The HTCR truck is a radial steering, bolsterless design aimed at reducing weight transfer under high tractive effort and reducing wheel wear on curves. The primary suspension consists of springs above the axles and the secondary suspension consists of stacks of rubber pads between the truck and the locomotive underframe, with the traction pin centering the truck frame with the locomotive underframe. Rather than being rigidly anchored by the truck frame, the axles are connected to traction rods which are in turn connected either to the truck frame, middle axle, or to a steering beam and interaxle link assembly, which is the outer axles. Yaw dampers are connected between the steering links and the truck frame to prevent oscillations at higher speeds. The interaxle steering link was removed from later versions of the HTCR after it was discovered that the truck performed similarly without it. The first version of the HTCR truck used a solid bearing adapter design that fully surrounded the axle. The shock absorbers were located directly over the axle ends on the left front right rear outer axles and both sides of the middle axle and the bearing adapters were retained by a bracket that extended over the end of the axle from the truck frame. Starting in 1997, the truck design was revised to use a split bearing adapter with a removable section on the bottom that allowed a wheel set to be removed while leaving the bearing adapter in place. The shock absorbers were moved to both ends of the outer axles offset from the axle center line and the bearing adapters were retained by chains extending from either side of the bearing adapter to the truck frame. In late 1997, the yaw damper bracket was slightly revised with the end attached to the truck frame rotated by 90 degrees. On phase 2 units, the yaw damper bracket on the truck frame was changed from a narrow metal bar to a wider metal plate. A slightly different version of the truck known as the HTCR2 was used concurrently on the SD80 Mac and SD90 Mac. It was very similar but used an even wheelbase, 82 inches between the axles rather than 80 inches outboard and 84 inches inboard and a wheel diameter of 45 inches rather than 42 inches. Most SD70 Macs were built with an isolated cab. Compared to units with a non-isolated cab, the rear of the cab wall was farther forward and the dynamic brake intakes were slightly shortened. The rearmost roof panels over the engine compartment were split in two on early production units. Most, but not all, later units used single panels.
Norfolk Southern SD60E number 6906 began life as the Chicago Northwestern SD60 number 8048 before becoming Union Pacific SD60 number 5998 during the UP buyout of the CNW. It was sold to Helm Leasing where it kept its UP road number before being sold yet again, this time to Norfolk Southern where it was numbered 6546. NS was buying up used SD60s to be converted to more fuel-efficient, eco-friendly SD60E models. Of the 250 that were planned, 135 were constructed with the remaining SD60s sold off. The 6906 is shown here at the Juniata shops just chilling on the beautiful spring day of May 10, 2017. Two and one half years later we caught the 6906 again. This time it was charging hard up the 10 mile climb to Clark Summit with 124 cars in tow. According to the conductor of this train, their weight was within 200 tons of the maximum tonnage for the power they had on the train today, keeping in mind that the trailing GP40 was probably offline. In video T183, we talked about the Norfolk Southern's rebuilt EMD SD60E. The 60 series diesels was EMD's response to the many complaints from the failed 50 series locomotives as well as the proving ground for its new 710 line of diesel engines. The SD60E was a step up from the standard SD60s with more horsepower, better emissions, digital technology, and the 710G3B prime mover as opposed to the 710G3A found in the standard SD60s. The logical next step was the new generation of EMDs, the SD70 locomotives. The SD70 was something of a special request by NS who wanted to stick with standard cabs and wasn't originally in the builder's catalog. This comes in line with the D940Cs of that same era which was another Norfolk Southern only exclusive model. Conrail's 24 SD70s were financed by NS and were built in Altoona with the understanding that they would become NS's in the split. In turn, CSX got the 15 SD70 Max. Apparently, the Southern Peru Copper Corporation and Illinois Central, now the Canadian National, picked up the model after the NS had requested it. Most SD70s are still in service today, however, they are aging and many have been and are scheduled to be rebuilt into AC Traction SD70 ACCs. The SD60i is an SD60M with the isolated or whisper cab. It's fitted with a cab that is isolated from the frame of the locomotive with rubber gaskets which reduces noise and vibrations from the prime mover. Spotting an isolated cab on any EMD is easy by the seam that runs across the nose and on the long hood where the cab connects with the body. Only the Canadian National bought the SD70i having 26 of them in total. That's 2585 North, 931 after stopping. CBF 672. This is Florida Fast Signals playing stop indication. Northward direction, main one, or main track to main track, handling our route over. 
The SD70M has the North American safety cab. There are two versions of this cab on the SD70M, the Phase 1 cab and the Phase 2 cab. The Phase 1 cab was first introduced on the SD60M and the boxier angular Phase 2 cab, I call them notch noses, is shared with the Phase 2 SD90 Mac, SD89 Mac and the SD80 ACE. The SD70M has D90TR DC traction motors and the 710G3B prime mover. They generate 109,000 pounds of continuous tractive effort. All Phase 2 and some Phase 1 SD70Ms have the SD45 style flared radiators which allow for the larger radiator cores needed for split cooling. Production of the SD70Ms ended in 2004 with the production of the SD70M-2. Over 1,600 SD70Ms were built with most going to the Union Pacific who made history by ordering more than 1,400. Other buyers were the CSX, the New York, Susquehanna and Western, Norfolk Southern and Southern Pacific and some that were even built for export. NS has recently placed their Phase 2 SD70Ms in storage for eventual sale. The SD70 M-2 is almost identical to the SD70 ACE save for the DC traction motors and the vented box behind the cab on the conductor side of the AC units. It's plated over on the M-2s. The M-2 grew out of the need for EMD to comply with the new tier 2 emissions requirements in the United States. Its biggest competition was the General Electric ES44 DC which outpaced the M-2 in sales. Canadian National and Norfolk Southern operate the largest fleets with the CIT Financial Group having leased out about 11 of them to the Florida East Coast at one point. Just like the Phase 2 SD70Ms, NS has recently placed their SD70M-2s in storage for eventual sale. The SD75M was produced between 1994 and 1996 in response to General Electric's Dash 944CW. They were mainly built as a special request from the Santa Fe and the Bensef and are slightly more powerful than the SD70Ms having 4300 to 4500 horsepower. They're almost identical to the SD70Ms except for the added bulge below the inertial air take on the right side of the unit. The SD75M only sold 76 units mostly to the Santa Fe who bought 51 and then to Bensef who bought another 25 in early 1996 during the merger process. The Santa Fe's SD75Ms were the railroad's last new locomotive purchases with the very last new unit, number 250, built in August 1995. The SD75I was built between 1996 and 1999 and has the isolated cab. Other than that, the unit is basically the same as the SD75M as both have the HTCR radial trucks and same horsepower ratings. The SD75i was the last model that used the I designation in the model name. All further wide cabs had the isolated cab, but the model designation continued to use the M. Canadian National had 175 but now has 173. The Benz have had 26 but now has 24 and the Ontario Northland Railway had six, but now has five.
There was no single major change during the SD-70 ACE production after 2005. As a DC unit, the SD-70 M-2 does not have inverters but retains the inverter cabinet housing found on the SD-70 ACE. Trucks, either HTSC or HTCR4, vary and sometimes varied within a single order. Rear sand fills are either on top of the hood or in notches on the hood ends depending on the railroad. That the rebuild of an EMD locomotive from DC to AC is possible is indicated by comparing the export version of the SD70 ACE, the GT46C-ACE, with its most recent version called the GT46C-ACE Gen 2. The older version had the two inverter cabinets, one in front of the engine and one at the rear, like the SD70 Mac layout. The Gen 2 has only one inverter cabinet about the same size as that required for control of one truck, which provides individual axle control. At least one of these GT46C ACE Gen 2 units had been built at Muncie, Indiana and had been tested. The original GT46C ACE only just fitted on a frame 22 meters over the couplers and had a particularly compact dynamic brake unit with twin fans side by side since a single fan of adequate capacity wouldn't fit and the frame was filled end to end. The Gen 2 version with one less inverter cabinet will have a walkway at the rear since there is now no need to use the whole frame. In 2014, the Norfolk Southern acquired nine ex-Burlington Northern Triclops SD60Ms, three ex-New York Susquehanna and Western SD70Ms, seven ex-Santa Fe SD75Ms, and 100 ex-Union Pacific SD9043 Max. The 90s, of course, were to be used as the cores for NS's SD70 ACU rebuilding program. Shortly after, NS acquired 10 more SD9043 Max in blue, purple, and red. The SD70 ACUs, along with the later SD70 ACCs, SD70 MACE, and SD70 Mac H added four new rebuild models to EMD's eclectic SD70 AC family, which is the subject of this video. There has always been a feeling among some people that the two-stroke engine would not be able to meet the tightening environmental regulations as easily as a four-stroke, which may be why EMD moved toward a four-stroke as the new prime mover design. The problem with the two-stroke is said to be twofold. They tend to burn more lubricating oil as they run, which add to pollutants, and there is a carryover of some of the charge when the cylinder is scavenged, meaning that some of the unburned fuel can pass through the cylinder from intake to exhaust and increase hydrocarbon emissions. These are both difficult problems to solve while sustaining fuel efficiency at the same time. Looking back at the old GE engine, as an example, the road switchers started out at around 2,500 horsepower and with modifications are now producing 4,400 horsepower. One problem is to find a place to put all of that fuel that a larger engine consumes. The underframe nowadays seems to be pretty well full on modern day locomotives. Intermodal trains tend to require lots of horsepower, and if a higher horsepower locomotive can be produced at a lower cost per horsepower than present locomotives, it will sell. Union Pacific, for example, likes to put 15,000 to 20,000 horsepower on some of their intermodal trains, or so it would seem. As far as running like units together, when you have over 1,400 of them, that's going to happen. Seeing as they're the mainstream of Union Pacific's direct current traction fleet, it's even less surprising since they're not going to mix AC and DC quite as much because they're each better at different tasks. The big ACs seem to go on the coal, intermodal and freight drags while the SD70Ms end up on the lighter side of the workload and heavy locals, generally speaking. Just the same as you'd assign a GP40-2 to the yard and not in coal service in 2022. The real question regarding the SD70s, especially for UP, is when they'll be replaced or rebuilt. 
Remember that record-setting 2,000-unit lease order that saved EMD at the time? Another 2K-unit order or rebuilding project to EMD would reestablish the marketplace and keep GE honest and on their toes, especially in the pricing. My guess is that it'll be a long time before the SD70Ms are actually replaced on UP, since they're still using 35- to 40-year-old SD40-2s that have been rebuilt for continued service. Or at least we can always hope. The SD70 Mac was introduced in 1993 following two years of tests with four SD60 Mac prototypes. It was EMD's first production locomotive with AC traction motors and, along with the rest of the SD70 series, was the first to use EMD self-steering bolsterless HTCR truck design. Burlington Northern and later the Bensef accounted for the majority of production, ordering nearly 800 units over the following seven years. The precise control and ruggedness of AC traction motors allowed for superior performance in both low-speed lugging and dynamic braking, and AC traction has since become ubiquitous on modern, successful freight units sold in America. The SD70 Mac was produced alongside the DC-powered SD70M and related models such as the SD70 and the SD75i. Although the two models shared many similarities, there were some differences aside from the traction system. SD70 Max rode on a slightly longer underframe, 74 feet versus 72 feet 4 inches over the coupler pulling faces with the extra hood length visible behind the radiator intakes. While DC models used two separate traction motor blowers, the SD70 Mac continued to use the central blower design of earlier EMD models, with a duct on the left side extending from the hood and running along the walkway. The inverters for the AC traction motors were housed at either end of the hood, one under the dynamic brake intakes and one under the rear half of the radiator intakes. Most SD70 Max were rated at 4,000 horsepower and later units uprated to 4,300 horsepower. Most were also built with EMD's isolated cab, which can easily be identified by the seam running around the nose and behind the back wall of the cab. While the SD70M received revised model designations for both changes, the SD70i for the isolated cab and the SD75M slash SD75i for the higher horsepower versions, the SD70 Mac apparently did not. No SD70 Macs were built with the older standard non-safety cab that was used on the SD70. SD70 Mac production occurred largely prior to the end of 2000 and the last SD70 Macs ordered by the Alaska Railroad and CSXT after 2003 featured canted radiator intakes for a revised split cooling system. In 2005, the SD70 Mac was replaced by the SD70 ACE which met the tier 2 emission standards and which was built on a substantially revised platform. 14 former BNSF SD70 Mac locomotives were working across the Norfolk Southern System on leads from Progress Rail in 2018. The units were pulled from long-term storage in Minnesota and delivered to the NS at Streeter, Illinois in December of 2017, then ran as a special movement from Kankakee, Illinois to Bellevue, Ohio for inspection by the mechanical department. The units were then forwarded to the Chattanooga Diesel Shop, which began releasing them for service in early January. Later that month, several had worked their way to various points on the system, including northeastern Pennsylvania, but most were in service on the Alabama division down south. The units had PRLX reporting marks and were numbered from 9551 to 9564. The 9564 was in the current BNSF orange paint scheme as the remainder were the original Burlington Northern Grinstein green dress. Meanwhile, over on the CSX, 25 SD70 Max, SD70 ACs, and CSX parlance were to be upgraded and or rebuilt. The work took place at the CSX's Huntington Heavy Repair Shop. Their primary upgrade was replacing the original Siemens control systems with Mitsubishi's Melco control systems, which seems to be the trend in locomotive rebuilding these days. Their 710 engines were refurbished by having new power assemblies installed. The locomotive cabs were upgraded with new floors and ceilings, LED lighting, display screens, electric refrigerators, and camera systems. A new CCB2 air brake system was installed, and the trucks were rebuilt, and new wheel sets were being added. The process took about six weeks to complete, and the diesels returned to service in 2019 with 15 more that were to be completed in 2019 and 10 more in 2020, serving as test units for the initial 12-month trial period to evaluate if the project was worth continuing.
the SD70 M-2 and SD70 ACE were a redesign of the EMD SD70 series aimed at meeting new emission standards that took effect in 2005. While they shared many mechanical components with the previous SD70M and SD70 Mac models, they received a substantially altered car body and underframe that borrowed some features previously used in the SD80 Mac and SD90 Mac series. The air reservoirs and associated piping were all moved to the engineer's side while the traction motor cables were moved to the conductor side as on contemporary GE units. The dynamic brakes were moved from the front to the rear of the hood and a wider radiator section was located behind a lowered and tapered central hood. The underframe was several inches taller than on earlier SD70 models and resulted in a shorter cab being adopted from the late model SD90 Mac. The radial steering HTCR trucks were carried over and a new, simpler HTSC truck was introduced that lacked radial steering and rode on a shorter wheelbase. Unlike the SD70M and SD70 Mac, which rode on different underframes, the SD70M-2 and SD70 ACE were nearly identical. The main differences were the substantially thicker and more numerous DC traction motor cables, smaller traction motors, and absence of inverter cabin events on the SD70 M-2. Visual changes over the production run were numerous but relatively minor and as the SD70 ACE outsold the SD70 M-2 by a wide margin, the latter had fewer variations. The 60 SD70 ACEs on Norfolk Southern that number from 1175 through 1234 are classified by NS as the SD70 IAC. All units were equipped with IAC, that's individual axle control, with one inverter per axle for better overall control of tractive effort. Units 1225 through 1234 were originally built in 2019 to NS specs, but for the Progress Rail lease fleet and were painted in black and white with Progress Rail logos and lettering and numbered as EMDX 2115 through 2124. The units were never used in revenue service before being acquired by NS and were repainted by Progress Rail and delivered to NS in March of this year. This year being 2022 for those of you watching this in the future. Personal opinion, I'd say that the current EMD individual motor control inverters would fit in the space of the DC switch gear on an SD70M and wouldn't require the long frame of the SD70 Mac. Just my opinion of course. I'd also expect that the older SD70 Max might get rebuilt first since they could use the existing motors just replacing the old inverters as they become unsupportable. Over at General Electric, much of the C44-9W and AC4400CW is fundamentally the same. Length, much of the equipment, layout, etc. aside from the actual traction motor package, whilst the SD70M and 75 variants are two feet shorter than the SD70 Mac with a different equipment layout like we talked about earlier. It might be possible to use ACE parts such as the inverter cabinet, but that would probably be a serious bit of work in comparison to the Dash 9 to AC44 rebuilds, I think. Like the ACEs before them, the IACs were all small orders. Back around 2010, NS had orders on the books for ES44 AC and SD70 ACE diesels. They had been buying more of the GE product for the longest time, which totally spoke volumes. I personally have no idea why they would just order 25 AC EMD units per year over four years. It makes no sense to me. But you know, NS, they do that kind of stuff. Their first SD70 orders were all very small orders as well. One of them was only 10 units, I think. Again, personal opinion. I'm guessing it's because they gave EMD a token order every few years to use as leverage to get better pricing maybe, like I talked about earlier with UP. I guess that's why they bought approximately 250 ST70, 70M, and M-2 models and over 1,000 Dash 9s. And CSX does the same thing. Look at the 2003 order of ST70 Max, the 4700 through 48 something. <laughs> they bought about 150 of them, over three orders of course, but more than 600 AC4400 CW variants. When Norfolk Southern released the first two of its rebuilt SD70 ACU locomotives, the program which began in 2015 was the latest for the railroad to upgrade older and less reliable locomotives in its fleet. The program drew from the former 100 Union Pacific ST90 43 Max acquired secondhand from EMD. The rebuild program featured a completed electrical upgrade replacing the existing Siemens electrical equipment including the inverters with Mitsubishi Electronics. The existing cab was replaced with a new isolated SD70 ACE cab along with a number of other smaller changes to the locomotive during the rebuild. 
The changes essentially brought the locomotive up to the same mechanical specifications as EMD's SD70 Aces. The first two SD70 ACUs released from Altoona were the NS number 7248 and 7283 in January of 2016. Both units were sent to the Progress Rail's Muncie, Indiana plant for testing with the third unit, number 7319, emerging from the Altoona paint shop. To accelerate the program, NS had EMD rebuild a number of ST9043 Max concurrent with the ongoing program at Altoona. The first four, numbers 7262, 7267, 7280, and 7295 were shipped to the Progress Rail Muncie plant to begin the rebuild program there. NS opted to buy the 90s and overhaul them to reduce expenses and costs, basically to save money by buying older locomotives to refurbish as opposed to buying newer locomotives which are much more expensive. They were renumbered as NS's 7229 through 7328 following right behind the SD80 Max. In 2018, Norfolk Southern and Progress Rail converted two old standard cab SD70s number 2537 and 2548 to AC traction. The new model designation for these locomotive hybrids is the SD70ACC and included new wide noses, cabs, electrical cabinets, electrical systems, and of course, new AC traction motors. The two original SD70 DC to AC rebuilds were sent to the Progress Rail Facility in Patterson, Georgia. The 2537 was initially sent to the Progress Rail Plant in Muncie, Indiana before heading to Georgia, while the 2548 had been in Coalfield service on the Pocahontas Division before making its journey to the Peach State. The original cabs and electrical cabinets were replaced with a newly designed cab reminiscent of the SD70 Max that we talked about in part one of this series an EMD SD70 ACE style wide nose, AAR style control stand, Mitsubishi Electronics, a new main alternator and additional weight was added to increase the maximum weight to 432,000 pounds when fully loaded with supplies, just like its GE competitor. The existing trucks were rebuilt with new AC traction motors installed. A new CCB2 computer controlled braking system was also installed. All units are equipped with PTC, that's positive train control systems, and are equipped for use in distributed power unit operation. Lastly, all are equipped with an automatic engine stop-start system. After rebuilding, the two returned to Muncie and emerged with new paint and were renumbered as the 1800 and the 1801. From Indiana, they were shipped to the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado, where they underwent additional high-speed and software testing. When the testing was completed, they went to the Juniata shops for repainting before being put into active duty service. When originally rebuilt, units were rated at a whopping 4,500 horsepower, but since then, all units have been derated to 4,300 horsepower until cooling system upgrades can be designed and installed. Like the SD70 ACU, 
The ACC and the C6M rebuilds are designed for heavy duty road service, but unlike the ACUs which began life as AC traction diesels, the EMD and GE hybrids can probably expect to remain on the NS roster substantially longer. The SD70 Mac H is an SD70 Mac rebuilt by Progress Rail for the metric commuter system in Chicago. The rebuild included the addition of head-in power along with meeting Tier 3 emissions. Metra approved 15 SD70 MACHs for passenger service with options of up to 27 more. The units will be the first six-axle passenger engines since the EMD F40C and the Alaska Railroad's head-in power equipped SD70 MAX. Another rebuilt SD70 MACE is the SD70 MACE which features new Mitsubishi electronics and traction motors to replace the Siemens traction motors. They were first rebuilt for the BNSF Railway and then later rebuilt for CSX and Kansas City Southern. There are several other oddball locomotives in EMD's SD70 AC family that I'll touch on real quick so I don't need to hear any hey you forgots or hey you left outs in the comments. There's the SD70 ACE-T4, the SD70 ACE-T4S, the SD70 ACE-P4, the SD70 ACE-BB, which is probably either a different gauge or maybe has a different truck configuration. Then there's the SD70 ACE-P6, the SD70 AH-T4C, which are Tier 4 credit units, and the H designating them as heavy. There's the SD70 ACE slash LCI, the SD70 ACS, the SD70 ACE slash 4S, and the SD70 ACE slash LW. In mid-2021, Yakushin Railways received two SD70 ACEs designated as 2TE3250, that's Russian, <laughs> and numbered 0001 and 0002. They are currently in use in Yakusha. A large group of 20-year-old EMD SD70 Mac road engines and much older in-cab switchers left the Kansas City Southern for public auction in East St. Louis in June. Included in the sale were 40 of the 75 SD70 Macs rostered by KCS, all of which were built for its Mexican subsidiary Ferro Viara Mexicana in 1999 and 2000. The historically all EMD KCS opted to follow its 1989 order for new SD60s with SD40s rebuilt to SD40-3 specifications in the late 1990s so the SD70 Max were their newest and most powerful locomotives when purchased. Though Kansas City Southern had begun upgrading these units to SD70 MACE, the move to retire them follows the arrival of the first 25 ET44AC-T4 from last year's order for 50 new GVOs. Two of the upgraded SD70 MAC units were on the sales list, the Kansas City Southern 3906 and 3946, along with all of the units that were not yet upgraded. It also follows the arrival of the new Executive Vice President, I hope I don't butcher this, I apologize if I do, Sama Fami, who previously worked with E. Hunter Harrison to reduce mechanical department operating costs and improve fleet fuel efficiency and other metrics at both CSX and Canadian National. That process has notoriously included the retirement of older, less fuel-efficient locos. He also spent three years with GE Transportation. Accordingly, it's no surprise that the auction will also include 16 of the SW1500s remaining from the 50 that KCS purchased between 1966 and 1972. Listed in the sale were KCS's 1507, 1509, 1574, 4302, 4325, 4326, 4329, 4330, 4331, 4335, 4336, 4338, 4342, 4352, 4355, and 4356. Also listed is a roster oddball KCS 1001, one of two former Corinth and Counts SW1001s retained after the takeover of the Mid-South Rail in 1994. The 1974 Switcher is one of just 112 of the models sold to U.S. buyers and was the last 1,000 horsepower Switcher offered by EMD, basically an SW1000 that was on top of a lower height SW1200 frame. Two of the most unique engines on the KCS roster rounded out the listings, the KCS 1400 and KCS 1401. 
Both are examples of the 1400 horsepower rail powered genset model RP14BD that was built in 2008 using as cores the two Green Goat GG20B hybrid units rail power built for them just three years earlier Kansas City Southern's 1868 and 1869. Those were built using two former Mid South GP10s, which had been rebuilt from GP9s by original owner Illinois Central. With the original construction dates of 1954 and 1955, they are officially the oldest units on the Kansas City Southern roster. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about regarding the end cab switchers and gensets, but that was another video and will be another video. For Trains 21, call me AC.